are dissuasive arguments coming to a loss. Who is ramping up oil production and will an alternative energy have great potential? Stay tuned for all this and more when we come back. Hello and welcome back to Energy Scout News and Information. I'm your host, Reb Byers. Today's segment will focus on production within the energy industry. And in breaking news, the White House threatened to veto a so-called use it or lose it legislation on oil and gas leases, saying the measure would push gasoline prices higher, damage United States energy security, and discourage investment in domestic energy. The measure is part of the broader debate over soaring gasoline prices and marks the philosophical divide between the Bush administration and congressional Democrats. And in other news, production delays but is on the way. Suncor Energy Incorporated reported that production at its oil sands operation is expected to ramp up over the next several days as the planned maintenance shutdown of one of its two oil sands upgraders is completed. Approximately 2,000 contractors were involved in safely completing the maintenance work. Planned shutdowns, which are part of the normal course of operations at the company's oil sands facilities, are scheduled to provide both preventative maintenance and capital replacement to improve operational efficiency. The shutdown began on May 18th. Unplanned work, combined with labor shortages, resulted in the maintenance lasting longer than the planned 30 days. Now let's see what else is happening in the energy industry. Alternative source on the run, Peabody Energy says it started shipping coal from its new El Segundo mine in northwestern New Mexico. The mine will supply coal by rail to two Arizona power plants under long-term contracts. The St. Louis-based Peabody says it spent $70 million developing the new mine, which is adjacent to the company's Lee Ranch mine near Grants. The two mines will employ about 265 workers. Utility Arizona Public Services Company will take as much as 4 million tons a year of coal for 19 years from the two paired mines for its Chola Generating Station in eastern Arizona. Tucson Electric Power Company will take 3 million tons a year through 2020 for its Springerville Generating Station. And you heard it through the pipeline. El Paso Corporation's Ruby Pipeline subsidiary was moving forward with a $3 billion pipeline project after receiving more than 1.1 billion cubic feet per day of binding customer commitments under 10 to 15 year contracts. The 42 inch diameter pipeline slated to begin service in March of 2011 will have an initial design capacity of 1.3 to 1.5 billion cubic feet per day. The approximate 670-mile Interstate Ruby Pipeline project will extend from Opal Hub in Wyoming to a pipeline interconnect in Oregon. Now it's down to business, but first, let's take a look at those leaders and laggards. Underscoring again the importance of financial drivers in today's oil market, United States crude oil future prices reached another milestone on Thursday, passing the $140 per barrel mark. The weakening United States dollar and the possibility of higher interest rates in Europe were again major factors behind the push upward, which probably explains prices ending today at $141.15 for crude oil and natural gas following similar suit up $0.11 cents and back on top at $13.36. Well, now let's regroup after we take a quick look at our people on the move. Strange news today, this ought to teach a cyclist not to ride on the road. Take a look. It's Colorado, there's animals, and we're out sharing the road, and things happen. But what happened to Tim Egan as he took an afternoon bike ride in Boulder's left-hand canyon is, well, barely believable. This bear looked at me with a look of terror on his face and sort of made a noise. I looked at him with a look of terror, and we both kind of went, ah! 
He says he was going about 45 when out of the blue, there was a black bear. When he turned his head and he opened his mouth, I, I thought that this is not going to be pretty. Egan says he and his bike flipped, flew over the bear and hit the pavement hard. He was easily 500 pounds. He must have been six feet tall. Egan's nephew was riding behind him and ran to his aid as the bear stood up and a deer stepped out. So I'm like freaking out. The wildlife too apparently freaked out by it all, walking away and leaving the cyclist wondering what happened. When I tell people, they're just like, are you kidding me? Like, who hits a bear on a bike? Right. So hard to believe it's happened twice here in two years. Who hit the bear? The other cyclist in the Boulder Triathlon. She's also okay, as are the bears. Or maybe the bear. <laughs> you know, a bear who hides by the side of the road and tries to get cyclists when they come by. Well, that's what you get for going into Paddington's hood. Try explaining that to your HMO. And that's it for today's energy headlines. Be sure to check out our website daily for up-to-date rig counts and company information. And remember, if you have any news from around the oil patch, be sure to contact us at energyscout.com. Don't forget to join us tomorrow. We will take a look at drilling within the energy industry. For Energy Scout news and information, I'm your host, Red Byers. Math and science are all around us. And today, they're more important than ever. Because math and science are the very things that will help the world meet critical challenges. Like developing new and innovative ways to deliver more energy while protecting the environment. The solutions to move us forward are everywhere. I'm Matthew Jimenez, and I work for ExxonMobil.